you've probably heard of a website called DistroWatch and it's come up in the news a bit lately because of a slight controversy where for whatever reason Linux Mint wasn't number one on the page hit rankings instead it was uh, MX Linux which is now at number two um, and this had persisted for some time people said it was rigged now I'm not really going to get into that but it just made me think about this website now it's a website I've never really been interested in and if you aren't familiar with DistroWatch what is it well let's just sort of get into this and why I want to do a video about it today so let's have a look so this is the website as you can see lots and lots going on here but let's actually look at Wikipedia's definition of DistroWatch and it's a website that provides news distribution pages hit rankings which is I think the controversial thing because basically it was attributing popularity to page hits although it seemingly explains that but it was to MX Linux except for people somehow thought that was rigged I don't know I'm not really interested in that and other general information about Linux distributions as well as other free software open source Unix like operating systems and it contains information on several hundred distributions now I'm more interested in the specific information so I'm just gonna come out of that and we'll come to that in a second so I'm more interested in the hidden nuggets of information that you might not be aware of in relation to certain distributions and I just thought let's have a look at DistroBox uh, DistroBox that's something completely in DistroWatch and have a look at some of the interesting distributions what packages they come with let's say or certain packages that are interesting maybe and their design choices I'm not going to look at everything only a, a very select few but let's just have a look therefore at what what we're going to be looking at so as you can see on the right on this very busy page we have all these distributions like we said earlier Linux Mint's number one MX Linux is now number two this has probably made a lot of people happy some people angry who cares we're not interested in that so what I'm interested in is, is all these ones at the bottom now there's obviously like it says hundreds of distributions all with their own design choice and their own packages and I'm not necessarily so interested in most of them much of them seem to just package certain ubiquitous software let's say that you're probably familiar with KDE desktop environment GNOME desktop environment Debian spin Debian spin sorry whatever you know the drill with these sorts of things that's how it just is in the distribution world not particularly interesting I think and this is certainly not going to be doing distribution reviews however there are all these forgotten about distributions let's say that have these interesting choices sort of like going back to the past maybe and uh, I'm just actually going to pick some from the list here of popularity and it's got a few interesting ones at the bottom so let's go on the first one so the first one is called Ostrumi interesting name maybe I don't know it's actually from Latvia and it uses Slackware and it's effectively um, a bootable live Linux distribution based on Slackware so incredibly light it's still active and it's really like a recovery tool that's I think how they want to advertise it so if you haven't been following my videos where you're practicing safe updating using if statements and you balk your system and you need to to root into the file system to update the Linux kernel because it's broken this is maybe the kind of thing you'd want to use because it's nice and light very quick to load and uh, might just do the job I don't know um, or you just want to have you know a USB key with a Linux distribution just to plug into a you know very light um, resources PC and just have something you can you know quickly go on a web browser I don't know anyway you can have a look at this I'll put the link in the description but I'm kind of interested in the um, desktop on this so uh, FVWM what is FVWM now a lot of this is also is going to be showing you window managers and again I'm not necessarily that interested in window managers because I just use i3 I don't care 
but it's just kind of interesting that the fact there are so many out there and so many um, you don't necessarily hear about anymore so let's have a look who knows maybe I'll do videos on these on the future so this is FVWM the F virtual window manager is a virtual window manager for the X window system originally a TWM which I think I'm going to come up to in a soon which is Tom's window manager I think and it's now a window manager for Unix like systems and uh, this is what it looks like hmm not necessarily something I'm going to use but it, if, if you want to throw back to the 1980s maybe that might be something you want to use I don't know so that's um, FVWM I'll put it in the description and uh, okay so the next one the next one is a distribution called Tiny Core Linux now I, I do have somebody who has commented on this channel regularly who I believe had been a developer on Tiny Core Linux so shout out to them I do apologize I can't f remember your name and Tiny Core Linux I think rec uh, more recent years has sort of come back from the dead I think it had been not literally abandoned maybe but hadn't been developed for some time and the thing with Tiny Core Linux again like the one we've just looked at is incredibly light Tiny Core Linux is a 16 megabyte graphical Linux desktop I mean that's insane what am I running at the moment um, well, of course, I've got all this stuff loaded. But it's like 100 or so meg at a time. I don't know. And um, that's incredibly light. So it runs off memory, boots very quickly. I think you can have persistent storage if you want it. Um, so, you know, you might just want to be interested in looking at Tiny Core Linux if you weren't familiar with it. Very interesting. But I was also interested, again, in the desktop in this case. And it has all these different desktop uh, environment so you can run of course DWM I mean DWM is just compiled so you could in theory run anything that's running the X window server I guess but it's got all these interesting things here so um, what are they so we've got the um, WMFS window manager and this is what that looks like kind of interesting mostly uh, desktop background there but gives you a hint um, and then uh, what else did we have we had um, FLWM, all these acronyms. I think this is FLWM, is it? No, this is Hacked Box, or this is somewhere along here. Um, maybe I'll just put it in the description, <clears throat> but you can guess what it's going to look like. So they're kind of like, I don't know, more floating window managers or stacking window managers. I don't know. No, not tiling necessarily. So in the old days, I guess you didn't necessarily have tiling window managers. It was all floating and stacking. I don't know. So there you go. There's JW um, uh, M. That's Joe's window manager, of course. And then you've got Hacked Box, which is another window manager, which I believe is on Tiny Core. Uh, you can even have i3, of course. Ice WM. So as Ice WM here. Um, from 1997 let's have a look at ISWM hmm doesn't really make an impression on me but again you might be interested in it. all these ones that I've not necessarily remembered all the, the acronyms and then what's this so um, but after step is that an acronym for I don't know there's so many there's so many look so you got this hmm again not for me but you never know it might might just be your solution you were looking for. Um, so, you know, quite a lot going on Tiny Core, so quite interesting. Might have a look at it one day. I think I have technically used it once, and it's similar to, is it Puppy Linux, and all these kinds of different Linux distributions. Just be interesting to look at, I think. Maybe we'll play around with some of these desktop environments, maybe not, who knows. And then, finally, this just amused me. BROS, which stands for Brazil OS. So, Brazil has its own Linux distribution just for Brazil. So if you're not in Brazil, you cannot use it. No, seriously, I'm sure it will work just fine. I'm sure it has English as well as Portuguese as well as other languages. Um, and nothing terribly interesting about this on the face of it. Just Linux, Debian, KDE Plasma. So there we go. So I just thought I'd highlight a few things here. And if you ever look through... Um, DistroWatch, you can 
you can see what packages they feature when they had their last release cycles and all this kind of stuff and even some reviews so there you go just a, a little look at distro watch just to highlight the eccentricities of some Linux distributions, some packages that you might not be aware of, you haven't necessarily thought about, you might want to have another look at. Just maybe that's what DistroWatch is more interesting, rather than literal ranking. Look at some of the um, distributions and look at their design ideas. Maybe you want to make a distribution just based on, um, I don't know, the area you live in. Maybe you're not from Brazil and you want to have um, the London Linux operating system, who knows, or the New York, or California, or wherever, who knows, why would you want to do that, I don't know, but just wanted to have a little look at that, because it's not really a website I've ever cared about, despite, you know, obviously being a Linux channel, so I thought, what's interesting about DistroWatch, and that's what I think is interesting about it, maybe we'll look at it again in the future. So um, we'll leave it there, I think. So you know what to do with the fake YouTube. You can like, you can comment, you can subscribe. And uh, that's it.